This in-service training video will familiarize you with the Draeger Jaundice Meter JM105. Although this video will provide you with important information, it is not a substitute for reading the JM105 instructions for use. Please refer to the instructions for use for more detailed information about any of the procedures demonstrated in this training video. The JM105 is a transcutaneous bilirubinometer. It measures the yellowness of the infant's skin, providing a digital value that correlates with total serum bilirubin levels. The JM105 is a screening tool that is to be used in conjunction with clinical risk factors for hyperbilirubinemia, clinical findings, and laboratory measurements to assist in making decisions about patient care. The JM105 can help identify which infants require a serum bilirubin measurement, but is not a standalone tool to diagnose hyperbilirubinemia. Before using the JM105, it's important to become familiar with the features, controls, and touchscreen display. A green power switch is located on the side of the unit and turns the JM105 on and off. However, it is not necessary to turn the power off before replacing the JM105 in its docking station. After the JM105 has been in the docking station for one minute, the screen goes blank, but the power remains on. When the JM105 is removed from the docking station, a green ready lamp shows that the power is on and the JM105 is charged and ready for use. On the opposite side of the JM105 is a blue screen lock button. When pressed, a lock symbol appears in the display and the touch screen of the JM105 cannot be used. Make sure the lock symbol is not present before attempting to use the JM105. A touch screen display allows the user to take a measurement, check the device, or access the menu to configure the JM105 for use in your clinic or hospital. There are two ways to select a menu item using the touch screen. The first is to highlight it by touching the menu item directly and then touching it again to confirm your selection. On some screens you might have to scroll using the up and down arrows to locate the menu item you want. Alternatively, you can use the arrow key to highlight the menu item and press the OK button to confirm your selection. If the touch screen has not been used for one minute, the display will go blank. Simply touch the screen again and restore the screen. An easy to read display shows the measured transcutaneous bilirubin value. Values can be displayed either in milligrams per deciliter or micromoles per liter. We will demonstrate how to change the units later in the program. The measuring probe takes a measurement when pressed against the infant's skin. An optional built-in barcode reader is located on the back of the device. The barcode reader will emit a red light when you scan a nurse or baby ID. We will demonstrate how to use this later in the video. The JM105 rests in a docking station when not in use with the display facing forward. The docking station allows the JM105 battery to be recharged. The docking station is connected to a power source either by a USB cable to a computer or with an AC adapter, plugged into an electrical outlet. The JM105 should be returned to the docking station when not in use to keep the unit charged. When placed in the docking station, the power comes on and the ready lamp turns orange. When charging is complete, the orange ready lamp shuts off. The JM105 requires two hours for the battery to fully charge. With a fully charged battery, approximately 250 measurements can be taken. We will now demonstrate how to use the JM105, beginning with how to check the light output of the measuring probe. The light output of the JM105 should be checked at least once daily to make certain that the light output is within an acceptable range. This is called a light check procedure. The docking station has a built-in light checker for the measuring probe. Open the lid cover on the front of the docking station to reveal the checker surface, a small black circular area. To begin the light check procedure, remove the JM105 from the docking station. On the main JM105 display, select Checker. The screen displays three vertical symbols, L, S, and Delta, indicating that it is ready. Position the JM105 measuring probe perpendicularly on the surface of the checker. Gently press downward until a flash is emitted. Lift the JM105 and observe the display. 
Compare the values on the screen with the reference ranges. If any of the three values are not within these reference ranges, clean the probe and the light checker surface with alcohol and repeat the light check procedure. If, upon repeating the check procedure, any of the values displayed on the JM105 are still outside of the reference ranges, do not use the JM105 and contact Draeger Customer Service. When finished, clean the probe of the JM105 and return it to the docking station. We will now demonstrate how to use the JM105 to take a transcutaneous bilirubin measurement on a newborn infant. During this segment, the device will be shown in multiple memory modes, memory off, memory only, link on, in order to incorporate all device features. Changing the memory mode is demonstrated in the configuration segment later in the program. First, remove the JM105 from the docking station. The green ready light should come on, indicating that the JM105 is charged and ready to use. If the JM105 was not in the docking station prior to use, it might need to be powered on. If the JM105 is left out of the docking station and not in use for 9 minutes, the power goes off automatically. Clean the measuring probe by wiping it with an alcohol swab and allow to air dry. From the main display, select Measure. To take a reading, first make sure the infant is calm, because movement can interfere with accurate measurement. Choose a measurement site on the baby's body, either the forehead or the sternum. If you are using the JM-105 in an outpatient setting, such as a clinic or physician's office, use the JM-105 only on infants younger than 14 days of age and use only the sternum as the testing site. Avoid selecting bruised, excessively hairy, or discolored areas of the skin as measurement sites. Holding the JM-105 vertically, gently position the measurement probe flat against the infant's skin, leaving no gaps between the probe and the skin. Gently push the probe until you see a momentary flash of light. Because the xenon lamp emits intense light, be careful not to press the probe when it is directed at the eyes. The measured transcutaneous bilirubin value will appear on the display. If this happens, you should contact a physician immediately. If no more measurements are needed, clean the probe with an alcohol swab and return the JM-105 to the docking station. In memory only or link on modes, if you are going to take a measurement on another baby right away, you can press Next Baby, clean the probe, and proceed. Many hospitals and physicians' offices plot the JM-105 readings on a graph called a nomogram, like this one. The transcutaneous bilirubin value is plotted according to the baby's age in hours and can assist in determining which babies require a laboratory bilirubin test or further follow-up. Refer to the JM-105 sample usage protocol for more information. A feature on the JM-105 touchscreen allows you to flag a baby's jaundice measurement in memory only and link on modes. The first is priority flag which is useful if you are taking transcutaneous bilirubin measurements on many babies in succession. You can attach a priority flag to the result indicating that this result is in need of prompt attention. A priority flag is attached right after taking a measurement when the final average value is displayed. Two dotted lines appear on the left side of the screen. Press the first dotted line and the exclamation point symbol appears. The symbol will also appear next to the baby's measurement in the History section of the menu. The second type of flag is a phototherapy flag, which is not used at this time and is intended for future use. To retrieve saved transcutaneous bilirubin measurements while in memory only or link on modes, go to the main menu and select History. Up to 100 measurements can be stored in the history, but the history must be cleared after 100 measurements or the JM-105 will not take another measurement. If you are not using data transfer, you can clear the history as soon as you have recorded the measurements in the patient's medical record, if desired. To clear the history, go to the main menu screen and select Clear All. The display will then ask you whether you want to clear the history or cancel your selection. Select Clear.
the display will ask you to confirm that you want to clear the data. Press OK and the JM105 will clear the stored measurements. If the device is in link on mode and you wish to transfer measurements from the JM105 to a PC or EHR system, place the JM105 in the docking station. The screen will show Send Data and Confirm. If you want to send the stored data, press OK. The screen will then indicate that it is sending the data. Before using the JM105 in your clinic or hospital for the first time, you may wish to configure the device. In other words, change the default settings according to your needs. These options include preferred unit of bilirubin measurement, number of readings to be averaged, preferred way to enter nurse or baby ID, if these are required, and use of the memory feature. We will demonstrate how to set each of these features. From the main screen, use the down arrow to scroll down to highlight and select Configure. The unit selection is highlighted first, so touch Units again or press OK. This will bring you to a choice of bilirubin measurement units for your display, either milligrams per deciliter or micromoles per liter. The default setting on a new JM105 is milligrams per deciliter. If this is your preferred unit, it is not necessary to change this setting. If you want to change the units, highlight and select your choice. Returning to the configuration screen, select Average. This feature allows you to select the number of readings you will take, meaning the number of times you will touch the probe to the baby's skin, and the device will average these measurements. The default setting on a new JM105 is for a single measurement. It is recommended that between two and five measurements be selected for averaging to get a more accurate reading. The next feature is Memory, which provides three options. Off means that the JM105 readings will not be stored. You will use the JM105 to take jaundice measurements and record them manually in the chart or electronic health record. Off is the default setting of a new JM105. If you want the JM105 to store the measurements taken, you must select either Memory Only or Link On. If you select Memory Only, the device will store the measurements taken. Link On is selected when the JM105 will be set up to transfer data to an electronic health record or computer. Refer to the instructions for use for more information on using this feature. The next configuration is the preferred method of entering a nurse ID and or baby ID when a measurement is taken. If you have configured the JM105 with memory off, it will not be necessary to enter a nurse ID or a baby ID because the jaundice measurements are not stored. However, if you have configured the JM105 to store and transfer measurements with memory only or link on, a baby ID will be required. Entering a nurse ID is optional. You can also decide whether you want to enter ID numbers or letters on an alphanumeric keypad or scan a barcoded ID band or nurse's badge. First, from the configuration screen, scroll down and highlight Nurse ID. You can choose between None, Barcode, and Touch. The default setting on a new JM105 is None. If you select Barcode, you will scan in the nurse's ID. If you select Touch, you will enter the nurse's ID on an alphanumeric keypad. The next menu item is Baby ID. From the configuration screen, highlight Baby ID. You have a choice between barcode and touch. As with nurse ID, if you select barcode, you will scan the baby's armband. If you select touch, you will enter the baby's ID on the alphanumeric keypad. We will now demonstrate how to take multiple readings for averaging. Taking between 2 and 5 readings gives a more accurate jaundice measurement. All of the measurements for averaging should be taken from the same location on the body, either the forehead or sternum. When you select Measure from the main display, you will see the letters A, V, E for average and a number, reminding you of the number of readings that must be taken with your JM105 to obtain an average measurement. For example, if your JM105 is configured for five readings, when you press measure to start the measurement process, the screen will display the words AVE5 to remind you that five readings must be taken. 
When the ready light is illuminated, take the first reading. After taking the first reading, the screen will display N4 to show that four more measurements must be taken for averaging. Lift the probe from the skin between measurements and wait for the green ready light before taking the next reading. After each reading, the N number will be reduced by one until you have completed all five readings. After the last measurement, the final average value will be displayed. All of the measurements must be completed to get a final averaged value. When measurement is completed, clean the probe tip with an alcohol swab and return the JM105 to the docking station. We will now demonstrate how to use the barcode scanner for those whose JM105 has this optional feature. To use the barcode scanner, make sure that you have configured the JM105 nurse and or baby ID for barcode. To scan the baby's ID, hold the barcode reader in a direct line with the barcode on the baby's armband and press Scan. The barcode reader will emit a red light that reads the barcode. You can also switch back and forth between barcode and keypad on the nurse or baby ID screen. For example, if the barcode on the baby's armband is unreadable and won't scan, you can enter the baby's name or medical record number manually. The JM105 has several other useful features. From the configuration menu, users can set the current date and time, choose a date and time format, select a display language other than English, adjust the contrast level of the display, and adjust the sensitivity of the touchscreen. Most users choose to validate the JM105 in their individual patient populations before putting it into clinical use. You can do this by taking jaundice readings with the JM105 on infants who are already scheduled to have blood drawn for serum bilirubin analysis in the lab. The JM105 reading must be taken within one hour of drawing blood for a serum bilirubin measurement. Record each JM105 reading and the corresponding serum bilirubin result from the lab on a data sheet like this one. When you have recorded enough simultaneous jaundice meter readings and serum bilirubin values, you can use this information to develop a protocol for use of the JM105 in your clinic or hospital.